Hi, and welcome back to the CISS Aero Academy. I'm Cyrus Hung, and today we will be looking at the axes of rotation. Let's get started. Here are our topics covered today. We'll be going over the three axes of flight, static and dynamic stability, lateral stability, as well as longitudinal stability. So, let's start off with what exactly are the axes of flight. There are three axes of flight, and they each have their own associated rotation, as well as the method of rotation. Here, we can see a master sheet of all the axes. We'll be going through them one by one after this, so don't feel overwhelmed. Do note, however, the fact that each of them intersect the center of gravity. This is because of a fundamental principle of physics, where rotation has to happen about the center of gravity. To give you a better understanding of yaw, here is a quick demonstration of how it looks like in practice. The yaw is controlled by the rudder of the airplane. By shifting it left or right, you can make the airplane yaw towards a specified direction. We will get more into this in our next video. Our next axis of rotation is the longitudinal axis, for which the rotation is termed a roll. Here is a quick demonstration of a roll using the front view of the airplane. The ailerons control rotations about the longitudinal axis and allows a pilot to roll clockwise or counterclockwise. Rolling plays a crucial part in the turning of the airplane, which we'll get to in our next video. Last but certainly not least, we have rotation about the lateral axis, for which the rotation is named pitch. Here is, again, a quick demonstration using the side view of an airplane. A pilot can pitch an airplane up or down through the elevator, which alters the direction of airflow past the wing to generate more or less lift at the back of the aircraft. Many of us may have a good mental image of the joystick used in commercial aviation, and this is its role, to control the elevators. Now, we move on to something more interesting, stability. Stability is simply an aircraft's ability to maintain a uniform flight condition and return to that condition after being disturbed. Stability is split into two types, static and dynamic. Static stability is the aircraft's initial tendency to return to equilibrium immediately after the disturbance. Alright, but what does that mean? Let's go through how this looks like in a real setting. Say a sudden updraft pushes an airplane upwards. Static stability shows the action of the airplane immediately after this sudden shift in its pitch. There are three types of static stability. The first of which is positive static stability, shown here. It basically means that the airplane has a tendency to immediately self-correct this sudden change. Great! This characteristic is highly desirable for airplanes used for tasks such as pilot training or transporting materials. The next type is neutral static stability. Again, the airplane suddenly pitches upwards because of an updraft and it doesn't self-correct at all. Its pitch stays exactly the same. It's not optimal, but it isn't too bad either. The last type is negative static stability, which, as you may have guessed from the trend so far, means that the airplane actually pitches even more after the sudden change. Let's take a look. An updraft, as usual. And then suddenly, the airplane suddenly jerks up even more. This is very undesirable in most airplanes, as it greatly increases the risk of a stall if the angle of attack is too high. Dynamic stability, on the other hand, describes an aircraft's motion and time required after static stability. Basically, it describes the airplane's behavior after the initial response from static stability. First, we have positive dynamic stability where basically the airplane will self-correct over time. Let's take a look. 
This is a rough depiction of a theoretical line the airplane will follow if its dynamic stability is positive. As one can see, the fluctuations decrease in magnitude over time. That means, without any external forces or action from the pilot, the airplane will theoretically automatically go back to its undisturbed state. This is very useful for trainer aircrafts as well as cargo planes. Next up, we have neutral dynamic stability. Here is the approximate path a plane with neutral dynamic stability may follow. As one can see, the fluctuation's magnitude doesn't change at all. Theoretically, this means that the airplane will fly on forever, fluctuating at this exact magnitude and speed forever. Lastly, we have negative dynamic stability. Here is the path as before. As one can see, the airplane's fluctuations actually increase in magnitude over time. This is very undesirable for most airplanes, as, again, it could be difficult to regain control and could quickly lead to a stall and a crash. Both types of stability are particularly important for pitch control over the lateral axes, which is what we explored just now with the fluctuations looking at the side view of the airplane. That was longitudinal stability, stability about the latitudinal axes. Yes, you heard that right. Longitudinal stability is stability about the latitudinal axes. So, how can we improve the longitudinal stability of an aircraft? One thing aircraft designers do is they actually make the aircraft slightly nose heavy. Now, this would usually be undesirable as it means that the airplane has a tendency to flip forwards due to the distance between the center of lift and the center of gravity. So, to offset this, the horizontal stabilizer at the back of the airplane has a slightly negative angle of attack. This provides another source of weight, or negative lift in this case, that cancels out the tendency to nosedive. So what does this do? Well, when an airplane pitches suddenly, the amplitude of the oscillations would steadily decrease. Until the horizontal stabilizer perfectly offsets the tendency to dive. This gives an aircraft positive longitudinal stability. By decreasing the angle of attack further, you can cause the force acting downwards to increase in magnitude, causing the airplane to pitch upwards. While increasing the angle of attack causes the slightly nose-heavy characteristics of an airplane to cause it to nosedive. Now we move on to lateral stability, which is stability about the longitudinal axes. Everything about positive, neutral, and negative stability and dynamic stability on longitudinal stability also applies for lateral stability. So, how do we increase the lateral stability of an aircraft? Let's first explore a scenario where the aircraft suddenly encounters a change in its lateral axes. A sudden updraft sends our airplane rolling counterclockwise. What happens now? Well, the good news is that the airplane actually already knows how to self-stabilize. Because the wing on the outer edge, the right, is moving upwards, the relative airflow comes from above the wing to below the wing, and so lift is decreased as the airplane rolls. On the inner wing, or the left, airflow comes from the below the wing while it's rotating, so lift increases. This causes the airplane to self-correct a little bit. 
but bad news is not enough. That is why a dihedral is built into an airplane. Dihedral basically means that an airplane's wings are angled slightly towards itself, which you can already see here with our model. As you can see, this adds a horizontal component to our lift vector. Now only the vertical component provides lift. In the event of a sudden roll, the inner wing's horizontal component decreases while the outer wing's horizontal component increases. What this essentially means is that the inner wing's vertical component increases while the outer wing's vertical component decreases. This allows an aircraft to self-correct much more easily. Great. Okay, in case it's not enough though, shifting the ailerons enable control over roll, as we have stated before. How this works is that, through shifting one aileron downwards while shifting another one upwards, the lift vectors can change. How this exactly works will be explored in our next video. And so shifting the ailerons gives you control over the roll. So, here's a quick recap of what we learned today. There are three axes of rotation, vertical, lateral, and longitudinal. Rotation about these three axes is called yaw, roll, and pitch, respectively. There are two types of stability. Static stability refers to an aircraft's immediate reaction after a disturbance. Dynamic stability refers to the time and motion until equilibrium after static stability. Positive stability refers to the amplitude of oscillations decreasing over time. Neutral stability refers to the amplitude staying the same, and the negative stability means that it increases over time. Longitudinal stability is stability along the lateral axes, and is achieved through horizontal stabilizers. Pitching can be controlled through the elevator. Lateral stability is stability along the longitudinal axes, and is achieved through making wings dihedral. Rolling can be controlled through the ailerons. Thank you, I'll see you in our next and last video.